So we've been doing a lot of um, supervised learning lately. Uh, in particular, we've been doing uh, regression and classification. Uh, now I'm going to give an example of an unsupervised learning problem, uh, which is clustering. And, um, and clustering might feel like it has some similarities to uh, classification. Um, in classification, sometimes I would show these scatter plot plots where there's different kinds of points. And we were, uh, you know, those points were labeled, right? Maybe there's some red points and some blue points, whatever. And uh, we were trying to find boundaries or rules to separate the different kinds of, of data points that we had. And we did that based on some predetermined labels that came with the data. We know which kind of point is which. Um, in clustering, we might similarly have some sort of scatter of data or the multidimensional um, equivalent of that. Uh, but the difference is, is that there's no um, pre-existing labels on the data. That's what makes this an unsupervised learning problem. Um, the algorithm itself gets to choose the labels. And, um, and so there's you know, a million different ways you can choose to apply labels to an existing data set. Uh, but we still have some uh, constraints, or maybe I should say like a goal. Um, our goal is to choose those labels so that we're kind of grouping similar data uh, together. And there's ways to measure that. So clustering is this general problem. There's lots of different clustering algorithms. Uh, by far the most famous is k-means, so that's where I'm going to start. Um, and so I'm doing some imports here. Eventually I'm going to be using the k-means that comes with sklearn. Uh, but to help you understand how the algorithm works, I'm actually just going to write the code from scratch um, in this video before we actually start using this one. Um, so in sklearn, there's this data set submodule that can uh, make blobs, or, or these blobs are basically clusters. Um, you tell them how many points you want, um, how many kind of different centers they cluster around, and then something about standard deviation. And, um, and, and that returns two things. It returns x, which is actually two columns, um, an x0 and an x1, and then a y, which is indicating um, uh, what cluster or blob each of these points was part of, right? And so I don't really care about why, I'm just gonna throw that away. Uh, but I'm gonna throw those two x values in here, and then I have this data frame uh, just like here. And so what we're gonna be working towards is trying to find, um, are there clusters of different points in here uh, where it's kind of centered around something? And um, and so let me, let me scroll down a little bit before I look at this code. And so here's a picture of those points that got generated. Um, you can see it's pretty random, although they kind of, I have center around three different points. I'm, I'm just putting a question mark here for now um, because these are unlabeled, right? There's no real category. I just have these two um, x0 along the x-axis and, and x1 along the y-axis uh, for my coordinates. And um, and so ultimately to do this, I have, uh, you know, I'm doing a data frame dot plot dot scatter like we've done lots of times before. Um, the reason why I'm writing this special uh, function here, uh, km scatter, um, KN stands for K means. I'll talk a little bit more about why we have that name. Um, is that I might not be wanting to show um, different symbols for different points. And there's not an easy way to specify a column that gives the type of symbol. right? So we have to loop over that. And uh, that's going to be determined by uh, this column called label, if there is one, right? Not necessarily, right? And, um, and so this is automatically going to be plotting. Well, I just have the comment here. Right? It's going to be plotting x0 along the x-axis and, uh, and so on and so forth. Right? So I'm going to be using this as I go forward. All right, so you can probably already see there's three clusters here. And well, we actually know that because we randomly generated the data. Uh, but how can we find um, kind of good uh, indicators for where those are? And those indications are going to be called centroids. We're going to ultimately try to say, well, here's the center of these three clusters. Uh, that we that we discovered, right? So how can we do that automatically? And, um, and so that's a hard problem, trying to find the three best uh, points. An easier problem uh, in general, right, than finding the best answer is to just take a bad answer and make it slightly better. Um, if you know how to do that and you can repeat it, well, that often ends up uh, giving us a pretty good answer in the end. And this is a strategy that we used for gradient descent. Um, it's very pervasive um, in learning. And, um, and it's the strategy we're going to use now for the k, k means, right? So we take a bad answer, um, and the bad answer looks like this. I'm just going to randomly choose some starting points and assign them each a, a different symbol. And uh, for now, I'm just going to assume that I'm going to have three points, three clusters here. We'll eventually revisit that assumption. 
and I'm going to scatter it down here. And, and so you can see that this is where it thinks those three clusters are. And of course, uh, that's horrible, right? That's not where the three uh, clusters are. So how can we automatically um, identify the centers of those three clusters? And so the strategy that we're going to use is uh, we're going to alternate between doing two things. Um, first, we're going to do something called assignment, which is taking each of these points and, um, and putting it in the cluster, just saying it's going to be in the cluster uh, with the centroid that's nearest to it, right? So these three things are centroids. Uh, uh, centroid is kind of a, a two-dimensional mean, right? So it's the average x0 and the average uh, x1, right? So those are the centroids. And, and, and so the k means, that's the name of this algorithm, right? So in this case, k is just a variable. And so really we have three means or three centroids, right? We want to find the best location of those. So, so like I was saying, we're going to assign each of these points to the centroid that's closest to it. And, um, and that's a point assignment. And then the other step we're going to do is we're going to update where these centroids are so that they get closer to the values that are assigned to them. And we keep alternating back and forth between um, deciding which uh, which points go with which centroid and then where the centroids are. And eventually it, it should hopefully converge and, and try to discover these three points. And so to do this, I'm going to be building a, a new class, right? And um, I'm just going to call my class KM. And, uh, and I'm going to have an init method. And uh, <clears throat> maybe what I'm going to do is um, uh, pass in the data frame uh, with all my data. And, um, and then people, in a lot of these uh, implementations, they would specify something like, well, how many clusters are there? Um, for simplicity, I have already created this data frame um, of, of clusters right here, which if I, if I look at that, what do I have for my clusters? I, I already have the data for these um, three points, right? I kind of did that. And so I'm just going to keep that outside of my class for now, uh, just to keep the code a little bit cleaner. And, uh, and so I'm going to grab these things, right? So I'm going to say that self.clusters equals clusters. And, um, and I may be making a lot of changes to these things. I don't want to change the original data, so I'm going to make copies of these data frames, uh, just like so. And maybe let's just uh, see that we actually have um, something here. I'm just curious what is in this uh, label, right? So I'm going to say uh, self.labels uh, equals self.clusters. And I want to look at that label column just like that and maybe i'll just convert that to a uh, to a list like so and then i may print that self dot labels okay so i want to create one of these things dot km and uh, and i need to pass in my data frame with all my points and then my and then my clusters right and i do that and um and well, what am i sorry, doing there that was a little silly of me uh, i want to save that in that variable and cool, those are my three clusters. I'm just choosing cluster names that happen uh, to be symbols, right? So I can easily plot these. Typically, people would just kind of arbitrarily call these clusters one, two, and three. Remember, there's not any label in the original data. The original data looks like looks like this thing, right? Where I have 100 rows, and then my clusters actually kind of look similar, right? I have the x, two x values specifying the center, and then also the label. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to be able to plot this uh, as we go uh, because we're going to be making changes, right? So I want to grab this code that I had before uh, to just see what's drawing on. Uh, just like so. And I'm going to plot that. And uh, let me see here. I, I guess uh, I can't just use data frame and clusters because these are attributes now. And I don't want those versions. So I'm going to say self.df and, um, and self.clusters. And uh, there we go, right? Our kind of initial state of the system that we want to uh, want to make better. And so remember, there's these two phases that I, I talked about. We're going to have um, something where we assign the points. Right? So that's going to be one step we're going to do. And, and, and what we're doing here is we're really um, kind of uh, drawing from clusters to points, right? Based on where our cluster, uh, maybe I should tell them centroids are, where our centroids are, um, that's going to affect, well, what happens in our points. We're going to assign each point to a centroid. I'm going to have that. And, um, and another thing I'm going to have is um, update, update the centers, 
right? And I'm just gonna, by alternating calling this and this and then this and then this, we're ultimately gonna end up with a good solution um, to this problem. Okay, so first off, how do I uh, do the centroid assignment? That's gonna be the harder one. This, this function here is gonna be a little bit easier. And, um, and, and so, well, what I wanna do here, right, is I want for each of these points, I wanna assign it to uh, one of the clusters, okay? And, um, and it needs to be the closest one. So maybe the first thing I'm gonna do is, here, let me just do this, km.dataframe. I'm gonna add some columns here, right? This is one of the reasons why I copied that data frame when I started. I'm gonna add a column for each cluster that specifies how close this point is uh, to that cluster. And, um, and then once I've added those three columns, then I'll add a, yet another column that says, well, what, um, which, which one is closest? Which one do I actually wanna be in? Okay, so I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna loop over all the, all the clusters, right? So, or I guess the labels. And, um, and so I'm gonna say for cluster and, well, I'm gonna loop over this thing, <clears throat> like so. Maybe let me just um, print this. And, and the way I wanna loop over it is I'm gonna do uh, editor uh, tuples. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and this is going to give me named tuples, right? So let me let me do this. Km dot assign points. Okay, I'm maybe looping over these named tuples, and so I know where the center of each of these things are. Okay, and um, and so now I want to update, right? I'm updating my points in my data frame. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at these columns, right? I'm gonna say x zero. And I wanna compute for each row here, <coughs> the, the, the distance between that along the x zero axis and that center, right? So I'm gonna take that minus x zero. And, um, and I'm gonna save that as x zero diff. And, uh, and then I'm gonna do the same thing along the other dimension. and um, and then what I ultimately want to do, oh, let me, my apologies. What I ultimately want to do is I want to compute the, the distance between, um, between these points and the center of the cluster, right? So I, I, have, I have the differences along these two dimensions. So the distance um, is going to be like this. It's going to be x0 diff squared plus x1 diff squared. And I'm taking the square root of all that. That's just the Euclidean distance. 0.5 to take the square root. And, um, and and let me think here. So this is an individual number, right? I'm looping, so but each for each pass through loop, it's an individual number. This is a whole column. So this is a column, this is a column. Really, I'm computing all the distances at once, okay? And so I'm gonna say self.df, and um, let me come back to this. This is gonna be those distances. I'm adding that new column. And what I'm going to use for this column name is the cluster that I'm currently in. I so I'm just going to put cluster here. And so, so now if I run this, uh, I'm not printing anything right now. You know what, let me just clean up this too. I don't need that anymore. Or better yet, just uh, delete it, right? And let me look at what happens to the data frame after I run that. Um, something horrible, which is well, it's adding these weird things, which what I really wanted to do was, was to be the cluster name. Let me do that. And now this is great, right? I can see that, um, you know, I have my x0, my x1, and that's a point, right? And I can say, well, how far is that from the O cluster? How far is it from the plus cluster? How far is it from the x cluster? And it's closest to the O cluster, so that's ultimately what I want to, um, uh, want this one to be in, right? So. What I'm going to do, right, is after I've looped and I've computed these uh, three columns, is I'm going to say self dot data frame and label. I want it to be one of these three. You know what? Let me, let me just try to poke around down here first to see how I can get to that. Um, what, what I really want to look at is I want to look at um, I want to look at those three columns there and figure out well which of these columns has the smallest value in each case. And, um, and it turns out that there is a pandas function that does that very easily, and it's called uh, index n, right? 
And, and normally what that's doing, right, is it's going column by column and telling me, oh, the smallest value in the all column is at position 11, smallest value in the plus column is at position 78. Not, not quite what I want, right? I want it to go horizontally, right? So I want to find out, well, which, you know, instead of looking at these index values over here on the right, I really want to look at the column column index here instead and say, well, which of these, which column gives me the smallest? And so I'm going to paste this back. And instead of saying axis equals zero, I'm going to say axis, you know, that's vertical. I'm going to say axis equal one, which is horizontal. And then I can get all of these classes, right? So I'm going to put this back up in here. And, um, and then I'm going to run this again, right? So look at my data frame. I run that and I can see, okay, great. So I have my original data, which never changes by the way, right? The data never changes. Then I compute the distance to each of these clusters. And then based on that, I'm like, okay, well, this first one, O is the smallest number. So that's an O cluster. Uh, same thing for the second one. The third one, the smallest value of these three is under the X columns. So that's in the X cluster. So I've been able to assign all of these um, points. And, um, and so let me just show you what's going to happen. All right, let me, let me run this again. So here are the points. If I do the assignments of points, you're going to see that instead of question marks, it's uh, saying what each of these are, right? So, so you see that this um, circular cluster is really big. It's actually kind of capturing uh, most of these. And then this one is kind of has the opposite problem. We have one actual cluster, and it's being shared between the plus points and the the x points over here, right? But but it is some clustering, and um, and now that we've actually kind of started with a bad answer we can make it we can make it better and the way i'd like to make it better is that now that i've kind of decided well which points are in the circle cluster i can uh, kind of find where that circle cluster is right i can see that um at this red circle here that's not a very good real center because that's way to the right of all of the points that it's representing right and so that one's gonna be a little bit easier now we're actually gonna update these center points Okay, let me, before I do that though, let me do one other thing. Um, sometimes, notice how I'm kind of calling this one and I'm calling this one, and each time I say KM, KM, KM. When, um, when people don't have to return anything from their functions, right, I don't return anything here, uh, what people will often do, right, sometimes you'll see this, is they'll just return self, right? And, and the advantage of that is when I call this, it does some stuff, and then it returns KM. And because it's returning KM, I can just try to chain this along like that, right? So that's one reason you often see people just returning self in a method. And, and so ultimately we're gonna be doing the same thing down here, right? But let's actually update these centers and, um, and try to do something. And, uh, and the easiest way to do this is with a group by, right? I want to, if I, if I go back here, let me, let me do this. I look at that data frame again. Um, ultimately, what I want to do is I want to find the new um, centroids, which are kind of the average of these columns for each label. And, um, and so the way I can do that is I can say group by label. That gives me this weird, let, let me just stop plotting for a moment. That gives me this weird data group by um, object. And, uh, but then what I can do is I can, I can compute the means on it, just like so. so this, when I do a group by, right, that's when I go to the index, right, over here on the left, and I'm kind of getting the mean over all these other columns. And, and you know what, there's too much stuff there, right, because uh, when I'm computing centroids, I don't really care about the averages of these anymore. So I'm just gonna do this. I say, I just want my, um, uh, my X columns. Right, and then the last thing that's a little bit weird is um, you noticed before, like when I started, um, label was just a regular column. Uh, the group by uh, made it not a column; it made it um, an index. Uh, but I didn't really want that, so I'm just going to do a reset index here. Right. So, so this little line here, right, this one line, is a quick way to compute what I'd like the new clusters to be. You see, it has all the same data as before label x0 and x1 right but but now instead of you know my data started off randomly right uh horrible right now i'm actually having some sort of uh, meaning to it right i'm actually saying well 
um, let's put our clusters at the center or our centroids at the center of, of the cluster of data that they're representing. All right, so this one's going to be very simple, right? They self like clusters equals that. And um, maybe let me just um, kind of split this off, right? So I'm just going to say clusters equals that. And self dot clusters equals. Right, so, so the first step is I'm just getting the mean or the centers, right, of each, each label. And then I'm just kind of pulling out the columns I want and fixing it up so it's in the original, original shape. Right? Okay. Let me do this. I haven't called it yet, right? I just called the one we did before. That's the one we usually start with. Um, but now I can, can do this, right? After I've assigned those points, now I can run the other function and make it better, right? So maybe let me actually do this. I'm going to just plot it here. am.plot. Let me just look at the original. So the first off, I don't know anything, right? It's just everything is random. And I do an assign points. Okay, that's good. And then after assigning the points, then I want to do what? I want to um, uh, update the centers. And uh, let, let me just do a quick experiment. I wonder if I can just even put this together in this one. That's trying to make my life a little easier. Great, I can see those two things, right? So, um, right, so the data started looking like this. I'm going to up assign the points to a cluster and then update the cluster centroids, right? So here I update the points and uh, and then you can see, wait a minute, what happened here? Let me just try to start. I, I ran it twice, I'm sorry. Um, all right, so you can see the first thing it did, right, is it assigned the points and then it moved it over. You can kind of see that, you know, this first one's assigning the points, the second one's updating the centroids. You can see that um, a couple of things happened, right, like this, this red circle moved to the left to be closer to um, where it's supposed to be. Um, and then this plus is kind of encroaching in. There's no reason for it to be hanging so far out. And so if I run these two steps again, like this, it's trying to get even, even better. All right, so I'm going to run that again. And, um, and now what you see, right, is not, not much happened. Uh, not much happened. Well, the red points that move originally, right, and not much happened over here on the left. But do but you see what happened down here, right? This plus sign kind of grabbed some more points after it moved in. And so since it's grabbing those points, X's remaining points are kind of have a great center of gravity more to the left, right? So when I update again, I'm kind of bumping that X a little bit more to the left, right? And if I keep running this, Right, it should keep bumping it farther and farther over. Right, if I keep uh, updating this, it might take a, a few times. I don't know why it got stuck there. There we go. And um, and so you can kind of actually see I've hit, run into a problem here, and um, and the problem is that. I have hit a local minimum, right? I can I can clearly see that it will be better if this red point, this red circle, bumps up here to the top, and then this X kind of grabs the cluster down here, but it's not doing that because it basically has to get worse before it gets better, right? So it kind of um, hit what we might call a local minimum. And so, well, how do I solve that? It turns out there's not a bug in my code. I got unlucky, and I wasn't anticipating this will happen, but it's a nice opportunity to talk about it. And uh, I got unlucky because of where uh, where these starting clusters were, right? I kind of randomly decided where those starting clusters were, and they happened to be a point where it didn't kind of gravitate towards um, the three actual um, clusters. And it turns out that this is a problem in every implementation. If I go to the, the real one, um, it will have this thing here, which is the number of times we should try running the algorithm. and um, and each time, right, it kind of starts off with different uh, starting points and then randomly updates it in the hope that it, it converges, right? And so then it'll take the best of those. And so I wasn't anticipating that it happening during this demo, right, because it didn't happen when I practiced before, uh, but I'm going to redo it now. So I'm going to leave my data alone, right? I'm going to see what happens when I come up and I kind of re-randomly generate my starting points. So I'm going to start with these as my three starting points now. And remember the default, right, if when we're eventually using sklearn is we're going to start over 10 different times 
and see what happens each time. And now when I run this, let me, you know what, let me, I don't want to have any old plots that are confusing, confusing things. I am going to do this. I'm going to say, that's my starting point. I'm going to say km uh, assign points dot plot. That was what it was called, right? Assign points. And then update, second step, update centers, right? So I'm going to do that. And okay, I can see that I've assigned the points and then updated the centers. And now, now I can see I got luckier this time and uh, it's not perfect, right? I can see that at this point, there's still some weirdness, right? That this one is reassigned over here. But if I keep even just a couple passes, it actually quickly finds out where the three clusters are, right? And, and usually be somewhere in between there. Maybe it takes a few times to actually uh, converge on, on the right thing. Okay.